Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. So this video is called Blue Light, Mind Control, Optogenetics, CRT Televisions and the Amish. That's a big long title, but all of these subjects I shall attempt to tie together and make sense of it. If you notice, the song I posted last week was about this very subject, Blue Light, from Devices. Check it out if you get a chance. I'll probably stick it at the end of the video, anyhow. Now, I want to talk about the blue light that comes from smart devices. It's a very, a very specific thing. Now, I know this has been talked about before by other people, but there are a few things that I haven't seen anyone mention. It's quite a complex subject, so I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. And you can always look into these things in more details to confirm for yourself what I'm saying. So let's start with what, well, what is blue light? Blue light is part of the visible light spectrum, what the human eye can see, vibrating within the 380 to 500 nanometer range. The blue light part of the spectrum has shorter wavelengths and it has higher, higher energy than any of the other colors. Most of the light you see from LEDs used in smartphones and TVs and tablets has wavelengths between 400 and 490 nanometers. Now all of these, all of these new, all of the new modern tech have a huge amount, a huge amount of blue light emitting out of their screens. And this is all quite new. It all started to happen in the last 20 years. Now older screens, older TVs, and we're talking about the uh, CRT televisions, the big old, you remember them, the big old tube TVs or the or the big boxy computer monitors. These were called CRT cathode ray tube televisions. And that technology used back then, it did not emit hardly any of this blue light. It was only a, only a tiny amount of blue light was emitted out of these old televisions compared to these new flat screen LED uh, screens, you know, uh, black mirror devices and TVs we see today, which emit a huge amount of blue light, okay? And because of this, there is a, now a whole industry devoted to blue light blocking glasses because this light, this blue light, it strains people's eyes. It hurts their eyes because it is so much brighter. I don't know if these glasses work or not, but there is much more to it than just this. So just to recap, the old TVs from 20 years ago, they had nowhere near the same amount of blue light uh, compared to these modern devices of today, the flat screen TVs, the laptops, the smartphones, which have a huge, a huge amount of blue light emitting from them. And you need to take this into account for what I'm gonna talk about later on in the video. So along with damaging your eyes, blue light is said to also mess with your sleep patterns. And there are also certain studies that suggest it makes you grow old prematurely. It says here, university has found that fruit flies that were exposed to excessive amounts of blue light saw their cells levels of metabolites change, resulting in the premature death of those cells. The aging process is the result of cells dying, it says. And these cell metabolites, fruit flies, have the same function as in humans. And we have to remember fruit flies don't sit in front of blue light devices and look at them all day long like many people do. Seeing that your smartphone, laptop, I mean, if you're not looking at them, you're watching TV. So much of the time today, people are staring at blue light. And many of these new TVs, I mean, I've noticed are incredibly bright. I mean, you can dim these TVs with the controls, you know, turn the contrast down, turn the brightness down. But there is still this piercing brightness coming through. It says here, LEDs have become the main illumination in display screens such as phones, desktops, and TVs, as well as ambient lighting. So humans in advanced societies are now exposed to blue light through LED lighting during most of their waking hours. Now you may be thinking that the brightness is white coming from these screens, but the brightness is the combination of all the colors of the visible light spectrum and blue light is a portion of the visible light spectrum, and this is the one that has been increased massively. It says here, blue light is part of the visible spectrum that can influence alertness 
hormone production and sleep cycles. The blue violet light portion of the spectrum, also it holds the most data. It also has the most energy, so it has more power. The blue light signal, because it has more energy, it can then penetrate more effectively through your inner retinal layers, through to the photoreceptors, which in turn then interact with neurons and therefore the way you process information. So blue light in these devices make this faster and more effective, more powerful in order to control your mind, basically. So whatever you watch on a device these days that has this super increased blue light emanating from it, whatever you watch is going to access your brain quicker, faster, and it will stimulate a stronger response. That's at the most basic level, and it's doing it far more effectively than it would have been doing it 20 years ago when you had CRT televisions, which didn't emit that much blue light. And this all comes under what they call now optogenetics. What is optogenetics? It says here, optogenetics is a technique that uses a combination of light and genetic engineering to control the activity of a cell. It's the control of your mind using light. And they specifically, specifically use blue light to do this. And I'll get back to optogenetics in a minute. Now, these LED lights that have a huge amount of blue light, they've started appearing also in street lights, in car headlights. If, I mean, if you notice next time you're driving, look at the cars. You can tell the age of the car just by looking at the headlights. The modern ones will have that very cold, white, bright, blue light. And the older cars will have headlights that will have warmer, yellow, tinged lights. You know, like incandescent light bulbs that are easier on the eye. Now, there's a lot online about the damage these blue light LEDs do to your eyes over time. Experts say that they don't know what the effects are. They don't know yet, the jury is out, but there is plenty of evidence that suggests it does damage. Doctors are concerned about the many hours people are spending on screen time and how it's affecting our eyes. And this time they're not talking about eye irritation and temporary redness. They're talking about permanent damage and blindness for adults and children. Meg Ferris has the story in part two of our Blue Light Health series. For more than a decade, researchers at Tulane have been uncovering how artificial light at night is harmful. Any light at night keeps your natural sleep hormone melatonin from rising. And there are connections between low melatonin and breast and prostate cancer tumor growth. There are also interruptions with glucose, insulin, and fat metabolism. Night shift workers have much higher cancer rates. Even worse is the high energy blue light from screens. We're not designed to have high blue frequency, you know, CFL or fluorescent bulbs. And so with these kids with their smartphones, you know, looking at all this blue light at all hours of the night. Dr. Rob well, Ross is a retina specialist who assisted on the surgery of the late Mother Teresa. His concern is that this kind of eye tissue doesn't act like skin or bones when damaged. It acts like the brain or spinal cord. We have a fixed amount of rods and cones. That's why this is bad. If you get damage, this is neural tissue. It doesn't regenerate. Treatments for macular degeneration are limited, especially the dry kind. People lose center vision and sight becomes blurry. Some have bleeding in the eye that Dr. Ross can see. So what can you do? So, I mean, you know, you've got a generation of people who spends so much time online looking at their gadgets. And for all we know, this could have Drastic effects on their eyesight 10 years down the line due to this blue light. Now, also, I want to bring up that you can get blue light, right, from the sun naturally. It's what's supposed to wake you up in the morning, the daylight. Although you shouldn't stare directly at the sun, but the sun, it's God shining light on the world and giving it life. So the sun, it gives out natural blue light. The blue light, from the screens though, is the counterfeit light. It's the false light. So just for a comparison, it says here, natural blue light from the sun, uh, which is a component of daylight, it differs from artificial blue light in that it is accompanied by a balance of other wavelengths. This includes 
a proportionate amount of infrared, uh, red, yellow, orange, and UV wavelengths, known as a full spectrum light. The brightness of the blue light that emanates from these screens that people are looking at is not balanced. They have exaggerated and amplified the blue part of the spectrum, so that is predominantly blue light, which so happens to be able to penetrate into your mind faster. Now, many will talk about how it messes with your circadian rhythms. You know, you won't be able to sleep at night, etc., etc. I'm, I'm sure all of that is true, but it's the mind control aspect that I'm interested in, which is clearly outlined in the science of optogenetics. Now, here's the thing, right? This is what some people will say. Oh, it's a, co it's a coincidence. There's so many coincidences in this world these days. I don't believe in coincidences anymore. In 2004, the big breakthrough happened. Neuroscientists who were funded by, amongst others, the Rockefeller University, MIT, etc., etc. In 2004, these scientists, they had a breakthrough. Uh, doc these two doctors called Carl Deseroff and Dr. Edward Boyden and a couple of others. In 2004, it states, talking about these doctors, a breakthrough came in 2004 when as a graduate student, he flashed a blue light at a nerve cell to see how it would react. Instantly, it fired. And this was the birth of optogenetics, a technology that has revolutionized the study of brains and behavior. So they had a breakthrough, 2004, where they proved and found out they could turn neurons on or off with the use of blue light. They showed they can now do this in 2004 with the blue light because blue light can penetrate the retina faster and more effectively switch on and off these neurons. And lo and behold, what else happened at that time? You know, we were talking about the CRT, big tube televisions and computer monitors. Well, guess when the big tech companies universally decided to phase out those big tube CRT televisions and computer monitors. It turns out it was the mid 2000s. So the same time, it even states here that Sony Japan announced in 2004, the same year this discovery was finally proven to work. It says in 2004, Sony Japan announced it would stop producing CRT big tube TVs and produce flat screens instead. That would be the flat screens, which just so happened to emanate a huge amount of blue light compared to CRT televisions. All of this seemed to happen around the same time. So scientists discover they can switch your neurons on or off in your brain with blue light. And then suddenly at the same time, all these companies decided to stop making the CRT televisions and monitors and change over to flat screen TVs and monitors, which just so happened to display a huge amount of blue light. Is it a coincidence? You tell me, or is it another stage of control in people's minds with these devices? And you, have, uh, and you have to remember, that was nearly 20 years ago. What can they do now? If you look online, you can see these videos of mice being experimented on, all done by optogenetic doctors and scientists attaching blue light to the mouse's heads and how they flash blue light into their minds and it will get them to eat, to attack or stop eating. It's controlling the mouse's behavior with blue light and their minds. I mean, here's an extract from MIT website about this. It says, membrane manipulation. Optogenetics is a tool scientists use to manipulate neuron activity by engineering them to express light sensitive ion channels. When those engineered neurons are exposed to light, changes in the flow of ions through the channels suppresses or boosts neuron activity. By using light, you can either open or close these ion channels, and that in turn will excite or silence the neurons, basically turn them on or off. That allows for a fast response in real time, but it means that if you want to control these neurons, you have to be constantly illuminating them, okay? So no, it says you have to be constantly illuminating them. People are constantly 
looking at their devices these days, aren't they? And then you have, you've got scientific reports like this one, which tell you straight up in search of blue light effects on cognitive control, in which they talk about blue light and how it can be made to make employees work in a more thorough way for their employers using blue light. Look, I don't believe in coincidences. These CRT televisions were phased out when they knew for sure they could mess with your mind using blue light, which is why as soon as they knew they could do it, then straight away all of these CRT big box televisions were changed to displays, which put out a load, a huge amount of blue light, which is now emanating out of all of these flat screen devices. It's now turning up everywhere as well in street lights, airports, headlights, everywhere. It's a new level of control. Another, another interesting thing is the Amish, okay? Amish communities in the United States live in a rather pre-industrial societal life using little, you know, technology. They use little artificial light or electricity. The Amish don't use these devices, yeah? Well, the majority of them don't. They get up when it's light and they go to bed when it's dark. They get better sleep at night because of this. And from this survey, they are far more healthier than your average American. They get ill far less. So, you know, they, they are exposed to real daylight, real blue light from the sun, not counterfeit blue light from these devices, yeah? The Amish generally live far away from big cities as well. So they've got low EMF and light pollution. They work hard all day. They, they've got minimal artificial light. They use light of the day and night candles, right? They generally eat uh, farm fresh foods. It says here, uh, Amish have a, have a 10 times greater, 10 times greater amplitude in diurnal variation of light exposure than regular Americans. That basically means their days are 10 times brighter and their nights are 10 times darker than the general population. So they sleep better, therefore their bodies replenish better. And I mean, is this why they are statistically much healthier? Is this why cancer rates in Amish are 60% less than the national rate? Is this why they suffer much less from things like uh, depression? You know, it, it's interesting. So look, to summarize, Blue light is a man-made counterfeit of what you would get naturally from the sun. And unlike the sun, the blue light from your screens is not balanced. It's all focused in the blue light area part of the spectrum because that is the part with the most energy and the most data. Because the blue light is more effective at penetrating through your retinas and getting to your photoreceptors Photoreceptors are specialized neurons found in the retina that convert light into electrical signals that therefore then stimulate physiological processes. So signals from the photoreceptors are sent through the optic nerve to the brain for processing. So blue light is more efficient and more effective at stimulating your mind. It is more appropriate for mind control, which is what optogenetics is all about which primarily uses blue light, yeah? Everyone these days watches and gets information from their blue light neuron altering black mirror devices. Does the blue light make those spells cast on the masses? Does it make that propaganda subjugated to the masses? Does the blue light make it more potent and more effective? I would suggest it does. I would recommend if you want to carry on watching TV, maybe pick up an old one of them old CRT uh, big box TVs and watch it. Apparently they've got better depth of field than the flat screens anyway, which I personally think are, are crazy bright. And this also leads me to remind you about Revelation 13, 13, which is talking about the false prophet. I suggested recently that the false prophet is the entire internet, television, media, smartphones, light in the screen, the entire system is the false prophet telling you lies. It says Revelation 13, 13, and he doeth 
great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So blue light is the man-made counterfeit of the natural and balanced blue light you get from the sun. And the false prophet, he brings down the fire from the sky in front of you, in front of your eyes. The electricity, Satan fell like lightning from the sky. Yeah. And that's it. You know, I find the timing of, of the discovery of optogenetics and blue light controlling people's neurons and the CRT screens, uh, television sets, all being phased out, both happening in 2004, too much of a coincidence, seeing that they were all replaced with new flat screen devices that put out tons of blue light. It's just too much of a coincidence for me. So that's about it. My recent song I put out last week, it was all about the blue light. It was called the MK Ultra Show. And thanks to all of those who bought it, even though it's, uh, you know, it's free to download, that was much appreciated. I mean, if you have any ideas for topics for future songs, let me know in the comments or in an email. And subscribe to the website if you want to keep getting notifications of these videos as these social media platforms are shadow banning me to oblivion these days. They really are. Okay, I may as well just finish up with the song again. Thanks for listening and I'll see you later.
not for you 